Namaste and Jai Hind and we kick off right from the headquarters of the G20 where all the action is with perhaps the man who's in the thick of things as the chief coordinator of the G20, uh, Harshingla ji. Namaste and thank you very much for your time. Namaste Anand and thank you for having me on your show. Uh, no, thank you for sparing the time in the midst of all of this and I know I have limited time with you. So my first question to you is, sir, one year down the line nearly when you look back, what do you think we have achieved as the G20 chair? Well, you do recall that when um, India took over the mantle of the G20 presidency in the last G20 summit in Bali, mm. Indonesia, G. the Prime Minister um, conveyed his vision of an ambitious, decisive, action-oriented, inclusive presidency. And if you look past at the nine or ten months that have elapsed since then in our presidency, I think we have lived up to the Prime Minister's expectations of mm. what India's presidency should have been. If you look at the fact that our presidency has been an inclusive one, uh, we have not only accommodated uh, our G20 partners but our invitees. Yeah. Countries have included developing countries from our neighborhood, from very, very uh, good representation from Africa um, and uh, has included, uh, I think, uh, we have also tried to include countries that have not been part of the G20 process in many of our meetings. Mm. At the same time, um, the vision has been to take the G20 beyond the capital, that's Delhi, mm. uh, to cities across the length and breadth of our country. So, so far I think we have hosted about 200 meetings in over 50 cities uh, and uh, that has taken India, uh, taken the G20 uh, to every part mm. of our country. It has democratized the G20, it has made it a people's G20 and uh, through the Jan Bhagidari mm. mode, I think mm. the G20 has also been taken to uh, the grassroots levels mm. uh, through uh, the University Connect program, the G20 model school, quiz competitions, um, also festivals where G20 mm. theme and uh, our presidency objectives have been popularized. So from every point of view, it's been inclusive. Uh, in terms of ambitious and action-oriented, if you look at our broad priorities, G. it has encompassed uh, the expectation not only for our G20 partners, but the Global South. Mm. And you'd recall that we had the voice of the Global South. We, uh, the Prime Minister consulted uh, 125 countries, heads of state and government from the Global South on their own views about what a G20 presidency should encompass. And from that perspective, I think uh, we have included issues that are important for mm. the developing world. Whether it is uh, how to take the, the SDG process forward, yeah. whether it is how to use uh, digital public infrastructure to achieve digital transformations, whether it is to strengthen multilateral uh, institutions mm. like the multilateral development banks, uh, whether it is to promote the concept of lifestyle for environment, uh, climate change uh, yeah. objectives, uh, how to stimulate growth, inclusive sustainable growth and women-led development. Mm. These have been priorities uh, not just of India but of the developing world. So, so if I were to ask you, uh, um, let's take that thread of thought forward. India has also pitched among the G20 this year as chair the, this whole concept of first right of use of resources for developing nations with the argument that the next two decades of development, two-thirds of the world's GDP will be contributed by these developing nations. How has that been received by the quote-unquote first world countries? Well, all I can say is that our partners in the G20, and as you know, the G20 consists of both the developed countries and the major emerging economies. Mm. All of our partners are with us in our endeavor mm. to promote human-centric globalization. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister called for human-centric globalization, working for the global common good. Mm. And I think mm. all of our friends and partners in the G20 are with us in that endeavor. Mm. That the G20 as a platform should seek to do more uh, to ensure an equitable, inclusive world order, mm. uh, economic order I'm talking about, and where I think there is every effort to try and see how the develop, developing world can be supported, can be assisted mm. uh, to realize its own vision mm. of development, uh, also how they can empower their people. For example, as I said, digital transformations, how yeah. can you use DPI uh, to empower 
citizens of these countries. Correct. And the Prime Minister pointed out there are 3 billion people who don't have identity cards. There are a billion people in the world who don't have bank accounts. Mm. How can we use our experience uh, in terms of the Jandhan Aadhaar exercise to help empower those citizens across the world? And through the G20 platform achieve many of the goals that we are trying to do. Mm. So I think that is inherent in our approach mm. and ably supported by all of our G20 partners. Yeah. You talked about taking G20 to the masses and democratizing it. I, I remember going to a school in a, a university in Sikar and a school in Varanasi. And two things that they said is that the G20 is not 20 nations. It's 19 nations plus the European Union. So add another 27 countries. So that was an interesting uh, fact that school children were coming and explaining to us when we asked G20. But uh, in this, we are planning to add the African Union. That's about 55 nations. Is that going to happen? Will the African Union become a permanent member of G20 by the time we come to a culmination of the G20 summit? Will that be one big achievement for us as chair? Well, as you know, um, mm -hmm. India has always advocated for a more representational mm -hmm. and equitable global order. Especially when it comes to global governance institutions like the United Nations, uh, the Bretton Woods institutions. How can we ensure that the realities of the 21st century are reflected in these organizations? And uh, from that point of view, Africa is a continent that we've always believed has been underrepresented. Yeah. It represents, as you say, 54 developing countries. How can Africa get its voice in the global order? And it's in that context that the Prime Minister has written to all of our G20 partners, his counterparts in the G20, proposing that Africa become a permanent invitee, a member of the G20. Hmm. And from that perspective, I think uh, countries are inclined to support our endeavor for the simple reason that they realize that the African Union, uh, African Union's inclusion uh, within the G20 will add uh, additional heft to the G20. It will make it more representative. And that omission will be, I think... Uh, because then that takes the size of G20 itself to about 91 nations, correct me if I'm wrong, 90 odd nations. That increases the size. But then does that also change the dynamic when we look at WTO, platforms like WTO, the 13th ministerial is upon us in February. Are we looking at resolution of disputes uh, under our presidency? So, uh, mm -hmm. definitely if you saw the meeting of trade and investment ministers recently in Jaipur, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the uh, issues that were highlighted was the issue of better um, utilization of the WTO to address redressal mechanisms, especially, you know, adjudication, other issues. Uh, I think there has been support for those uh, efforts from our side. Uh, and in having a more representative uh, grouping, uh, you know, the G20 becoming more representative, other groupings becoming more representative automatically will facilitate that endeavor to include um, issues that uh, matter for the developing world. Um, I mean, one of the things that we've been saying all this time is that, uh, you know, the uh, decision-making bodies, uh, if they're not aware of what are concerns and what are the expectations of the developing world, they can't take the right decisions. And so we are trying to rectify that process, and I think that uh, certainly is uh, uh, going to happen. So that going to happen is very important. It doesn't come so easily from uh, Harshwardhan ji. Let me ask you, while we've taken G20 to all across the country, how much of our country are the many layers of these delegates taking back? Has their perception about what Bharat is and who we are, how, where, where we are, has that changed? Have you seen that yourself in terms of feedback? So the Prime Minister has said mm -hmm. that every state in India has its own uniqueness its own culture, its own, you know, beauty, its own, uh, I would say, cuisine. Uh, it's important uh, for uh, mm -hmm. the G20 delegates who are coming to India to be able to experience that. And so, in a certain sense, by taking uh, G20 uh, delegates to every part, the length and breadth of our country, uh, I think what we have achieved is that uh, we have exposed the country's, uh, or highlighted the country's uh, cultural heritage, uh, diversity, and tourism potential to all of our G20 delegates who are very prominent uh, representatives of these influential countries. Mm. So each of them have taken back with them a part of India. And I think uh, 
if you see, I mean, I think it's not for us to say, but if you see the comments by delegates uh, in every meeting possible, uh, and those are on the record as well, uh, they have absolutely, um, you know, loved the experience. Uh, they have revelled in it, and I think uh, given half a chance, many of them would come back on their own to India, would tell everybody else about their experiences in India. So, in a certain sense, uh, that uh, exposure to India that we've been able to provide it's sort of, sort of in-depth. You go to a part of India and you are able to see, uh, you know, the most scenic places, the historic places. You're able to experience the food, the culture of that place, meet the people of that place. I think that is uh, a rare experience for many of our visitors and will be uh, definitely of great uh, uh, utility to us. I mean, if you see... interesting story. Yes, I was telling you that if you look at Srinagar, if you look at Srinagar, Srinagar was a meeting in the G20 in the tourism sector. And there were the delegates who were there. They thought that this is the part of Bharat. This is such a beautiful and such a unique opportunity. So, this is the difference from محسوس ہوا کہ اس کے بعد جو ٹوریزم انفلوز تھے اور خاص طور سے جو فورن ٹورس آ رہے ہیں وہ شری نگر جمعون کشمیر کے دور جاتے جانا شروع کر دے اور ڈیفٹین گورنر میں حالی میرے خیال سے ایک ہفتے پہلے انہوں نے یہ سٹیٹمنٹ دیا کہ جی ٹوینٹی کے قارن سے ٹوریزم انکمنگ ٹوریزم شری نگر میں بہت بڑھ گیا بڑھ گیا so that's one but does that also change perception about what narratives are about certain I know you'd like to steer clear of those comments but I'm still asking you because did did you find at the top that some delegates came thinking about this whole snake charmer some bichu wala thought process outside of the national capital did you see them change come back and say alright I'm going back educated with a different perspective of Bharat so Everywhere we've had G20 meetings, we've also tried to have side events of the G20 that, that is able to provide uh, them mm. with a sense of the cutting-edge technologies that we possess. For example, when the education working group met in Bangalore, uh, the delegates were taken to the Indian Institute of Science. Science. Uh, when we had a meeting in Chennai, they were taken to the IIT uh, Chennai, uh, where uh, they were able to see uh, some uh, of the startups that have been started by people who are students, alumni mm. of yeah. the IIT, for example. So everywhere we have tried to expose uh, what is uh, a uniqueness of India's, uh, I would say, innovative uh, culture that has come up. Uh, many of them are pioneered by young people. Uh, and I think um, that impact has been felt by each and every delegate, that India today is a country on the move. India today is uh, not only a country well on its way to uh, growth and development, but also a country that is in many senses a cradle of research and development, innovation uh, and uh, scientific, uh, I would say, achievements. Final two questions, sir. Has the moon landing, Chandrayaan, made a difference? Did delegations come back and say, all right, let's include space into the agenda? I think it has made a tremendous impact. It has made a tremendous impact. Uh, in fact, uh, mm -hmm. some of our meetings were happening even while the uh, you know, moon uh, Chandrayaan 3 was touching out, touching down on the south side of the moon and I think the um, the impact it created among the delegates was is, is difficult to describe because I think it, it showed another facet of India that was not there. And uh, certainly when you look at the fact that G20 includes a research and innovation yeah. group, it includes a science 20, uh, it includes startup 20, uh, it includes many areas that are linked and it includes, of course, a space working group also. Space there working. is a space uh, meeting of the G20. There is a meeting of chief scientists of the G20. All of these groups are in some way linked to our space program. And I think it will foster a lot more interest in collaboration with India hmm. uh, in an area that uh, has not been well known in terms of our own scientific uh, progress and achievements. And today, uh, we are at the cutting edge, the leading edge of uh, space exploration in the world. It is today the moon, tomorrow the, the sun and the solar yeah. system. I think that uh, that's, uh, raises and opens a new, whole new area of fascination for the rest of the world. Final question, sir. Ahead of the leadership summit or at the su uh, leadership summit, one big box that you would like ticked? Well, I mean, uh, the, the box that is yet to be ticked is the leadership <laughs> summit. And I think we are certainly looking forward. This is 
probably the most significant international event that India has hosted. Uh, it is uh, a moment of India's leadership and the Prime Minister at the helm of it. Uh, I think many countries look at us as having the experience and the expertise to be able to contribute to finding solutions to global challenges of the day. Uh, and the summit, no doubt, will be the crowning glory of India's G20 presidency. And I have no doubt that this will be a memorable summit that will fulfill our expectations of an ambitious, decisive, action-oriented, inclusive hmm. presidency of, the, of India's G20. Focusing on development and the economics and keeping the geopolitics aside, do you think that will be achieved? Focus will be on technology, development uh, and uh, all the areas in which uh, India is regarded worldwide today as a leader, whether it's renewables, whether it is in terms of pharmacy, uh, whether it is in, in terms of new technologies like frictionless credit, um, the uh, central bank digital currency, uh, mm. India stack, all of this will be on full display and will be highlighted during the summit. Our technology will be very much there for everybody to see at the summit. Well, we are uh, eagerly waiting for that and I know he's on a clock so we thank you so much for your time sir. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you Anand. Thank Absolute you sir. Pleasure. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.